Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to give you the top 10 new features in OBS 26. Let's jump into it. So OBS 26 is currently in beta if you're watching this here at the end of August in 2020. I'm super excited about some of these features. I have it installed. We're going to take a look at them. But first, really quickly, let's review what's happened over the past couple of years with OBS. OBS 20 was the big one where we got studio support. And what that did really quickly, I'll pull it up here, is allow us to have a preview and a program area inside of OBS so that we could transition into new scenes, which was a really big improvement. Not only that, but we got all these cool themes available and OBS started to look really great. But with that being said, uh, OBS 24 gave us controllable audio sources for our browsers. Imagine that, we didn't have it. C custom browser panels, which we'll take a, qu a quick look at today. The ability to have a dynamic bit rate, which is really great for keeping your quality of your stream high, dependent on how much internet bandwidth you have for streaming. We got some hardware decoding for media sources and in general, NVIDIA graphics cards and now Intel graphics cards are getting a lot better performance out of OBS. Using uh, in OBS 25, we got SRT support. It was a big new feature for vMix. OBS added it as well. That is a secure, reliable transport, which is used for a lot of advanced streamers, but most of the normal to everyday streamers do not use that feature. The T-Bar is a cool one. We took a quick peek at that. We had some improvements to the browser sources, some new layouts, and I love the new drag and drop options where you can just drag and drop files into OBS. But let's take a look at what's new with 26 here. Biggest thing is the brand new, and I'm going to show this here, built-in virtual camera option. Take a look at this. Very excited about it. You can see here that I can start and stop this virtual camera. So what that allows us to do, if I open up Zoom and just launch a new meeting, I've already got it here set up. Let me just launch Zoom here. I've already got it set up to open my OBS virtual camera. But while OBS is the, has nothing going, it just looks like this. When I hit start virtual camera, boom, anything I have in OBS will show up here in Zoom. So pretty cool. Uh, very exciting about that. There was a plugin that allowed this and the plugin may actually have some new features that uh, some different features such as selecting individual sources and adding a filter that will make them output as a virtual camera. But I assume that that will be built into OBS 26. Now it's important to note, this is only available for Windows currently. It is not available for Mac yet. Um, there's a new source toolbar that is probably one of the best UI upgrades that OBS could have done. This is right here, as you can see it here. So when I select different sources inside of OBS, we get the opportunity to adjust some of the options for each source. Now, if we look at this text one in particular, this is a great one. I can actually quickly change what is in this title. So I can say, what is in this title? I can also change the font really quickly and I can change the color very quickly without having to actually go into the properties, but it's nice that there's also a properties and a filters area that's accessible directly through this new little media bar right here. So very excited about that media bar. For example, if we're looking at a device like a camera, it gives us the option to drop and down all the different cameras. This is particularly helpful for NDI sources as well. So let's say we're looking through all the different NDI sources that are available today. We're gonna pick up uh, one of these new Huddlecam HD webcam sources here, put it on the top so I can see it. And then when I click through here, oh, sorry. NDI source here. Um, okay, that doesn't come up with a drop down of all the selectable NDI sources. I thought it might. Uh, that would be nice because it seems like that's what it's doing for a lot of these. But there you go. 
Okay, so moving forward on what else is new, we have a new suppression, noise suppression method called RN Noise. And it's an AI based noise suppression solution uh, that's significantly better than what we had before. So let's take a peek at it. So let's say that you've got a source in your audio mixer. And by the way, a lot of people don't know this, you can adjust the where things are in your layout inside of OBS, which is pretty cool. And you can right click the audio mixer and hit vertical layout, which is a cool way to easily kind of uh, take a look at these audio sources and uh, view them better. But let's go ahead to filters, which is where we're going to find our new audio source. Here we go. And in this new audio sources area, we can click the plus button and add the new noise suppression option. Now, noise suppression essentially takes away the background noise. There used to be speaks, which gave us a level in which to suppress the audio to. The new noise suppression system is better for novices, but it's supposedly better for everyone. It takes a little bit more CPU usage than the traditional speaks, but it uses AI to just do all the work for you. So you can add that there and your background noise should be reduced significantly. Now we've got a new hotkey for screenshots. So if you like to take screenshots during your production, I've actually been using this and testing it. It's pretty cool. The first thing you should look up is where is your recording path? So our report recording path that we have here in the output tab of the settings area inside of OBS shows us that our, I have my recording path here. Now that is where they will be stored. And then you have this new um, shortcut here. I have it set for shift A. If I hold shift, if I click shift A, a screenshot will be put into my recording path. So pretty nice. That is a good feature. I think a lot of people like that. Um, we also have new sRGB color support. It's more accurate and it's set up by default. There's a new percentage toggle checkbox, which is a cool one. If we go into our advanced audio mixer, what we will find is a percentage option instead of looking at it in decimal levels. Again, I think that's easier for a lot of people who are just learning about streaming. The UI, I love the new, the new source, um, media source options here, all making it easier for beginners, but there's some great things for advanced folks as well, including the QSV encoder, which is better for Intel GPU computers. I'm thinking about the folks who have Intel Nook computers. Uh, there's an improved interface for transitions, better sample rates for the audio mixer, and this is where you can get the latest OBS 26 release candidate, it's going to be a lot easier for using OBS with software like Zoom and Google Hangouts. And then I finally want to plug my book. You can get it for free at ptzoptics.com slash book. It's called The Unofficial Guide to Open Broadcaster Software. It's also available on Amazon. You can take the course, the free course that comes with it with the coupon code OBSV26. That code expires in 30 days. All right. That's everything you need to know about the brand new OBS 26 release candidate. It's in beta. The link is below. Check it out. And of course, there's more to it that you can read in the GitHub notes released by the developers, the worldwide network of developers. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If there's a feature you want us to cover in more depth, let us know in the comments below. Bye, everybody. Take care.